It's a quiet morning in early 2005. We have all the day free, so we turn on the television and we have this on the screen. I really wanted to review sagas precisely because I want to see how much my perspective has changed, if it was for the good or for the bad, and it is a Dragon Ball game, of course I had to bring it to the channel. So what do you think it will reach a goal of 100 likes and you support me to continue bringing more related content? Without more to say, let's dive into it. Being the only Dragon Ball game until then developed by a studio other than Japanese, on March 22, 2005, Dragon Ball Z Sagas arrived as a title with great ambitions. The platforms at which its target public was aiming like the Xbox, PlayStation 2 and Nintendo GameCube by then were already enjoying giants of the genre like Budokai 3. But those from Avalanche Software had a different idea. I'm sure many of you thought about this idea, the concept of a GTA-style game with the world of Dragon Ball. GTA San Andreas had become a worldwide phenomenon and the more its popularity growed, the more developers considered the idea of structuring a similar genre. Dragon Ball Sagas tried to arrive with a game ideology very different from the one that Budokai had. It was a game with a linear open world adventure mode in which you could relive the most important sagas of Dragon Ball Z. The idea seemed fantastic and it had all the potential in the world to be one of the most important titles of the year. And so, the adventure began. This game became one of my favorites, I loved being able able to move freely to at some point, level up and get new skills, pretend that I was living the story of my favorite series in a setting that was not just sequences of direct fights. The game could be played comparatively and leads to very funny scenarios with friends to complete the campaign in just a few hours. The estimated playtime of the main story is between 4 and 5 hours, so it was a very accessible title. But once I started replaying it to make this video, I realized a lot of things. A progression system in a linear open world where you can face various enemies before achieving the objective of the mission, which may be to be the final boss, which could be some of the main villains of the sagas, or collect the Dragon Balls, as well as a special objects. The feeling of playing this game, its kinesthetic, is quite regular. The way in which the character runs and has to accelerate progressively every time he moves forward, and I will not deny it, it is very annoying. It can be said that this gives a certain realism to the movement mechanics, and although this point is completely valid, and that was its intention from the beginning, the truth is that a movement acceleration system, although it should be slow when starting, it should also be slow when stopping. So why? Slowdown was not taken into account. The flight system is also much improbable, but you can keep floating in the air once you press X after a jump. I don't see any problem here. My problem is that there is no natural way to ascend or descend in height. There are objects on the map that can only be reached at a certain height, and there are only a few platforms along the map that have that height. To get to those objects, you must get on those platforms and return the whole map to collect all the objects, this time with the correct height. This doesn't make any sense with a Dragon Ball character, and second, it is a horrible level design. I had already talked before about how the repetition of the same level seems to me a lazy recycling option on the part of the developers to make a game time, but here, even though the collection of objects is optional, it is conflicting with that only mechanic that it offers us something new in the progress of the story, the upgrade system. Z points are collected at all levels and are used to redeem new abilities like combos, special moves, or more speed. That is very good, it encourages you to collect all the objects you can to become the best version of yourself. So once again, why make collecting these points the most tedious part of the entire gaming experience? The enemies that we could find throughout the levels are the Sabermen with different variants like the Giants, which do more damage and have long range abilities, and the Purple which can summon more Cybermen on the field. There are the Frieza Soldiers and the Robots of the Future. There are also the Yadrets and the Cell Junior, but these are are one-time enemies, all with a repertory of identical movements to those we have with the exception of the self-destruction of the Cybermans and the giant robots that release small mines with legs, a lack of creativity on that side. The soundtrack is something that this game can presume on, it has some of the most catchy and memorable melodies of the era that fit perfectly in many of the situations of the series, a completely extra diegetic music but that accompanies almost imperceptibly with the action, I love it. Another of the 
positive points that this game has is the assembly and narration with voiceover that is done at the beginning and end of each level, since by themselves the immersion mechanics and operations of the game had several shortcomings either due to its poor level design or its slightly weak graphic section with a repertory of only 10 body gestures for character interaction. This section made up that result. At least personally, this story of the events seems wonderful to me, very well executed, the assembly is fast, dynamic, capable of summarizing in a very natural way everything that happens in an average of more than 20 chapters of the series. A voice that even to this day causes me chills when I listen to it again. This was the best resource that Dragon Ball Z sagas had to advance its plot. Upon reaching the final bosses on each level, they had skills that in the beginning we see and seemed to be from the enemy's unique repertory. But no, it turns out that these skills could also be unlocked for us to use, and I think it was a great idea how we are introduced Introduced to new skills with little wings in the fights of the most important bosses. You could only think about, hey, I'm going to keep playing and become as strong as the final boss with his same qualities. Among some of these improvements, as I mentioned above, we could learn new combos, different button combinations besides just crushing the square and the triangle. They resulted in not very unique animations, maybe it just added one more punch movement that we had not seen, but in essence it was still exactly the same. Speaking more specifically about the story, beyond that this seems to me one of the best representations of Akira Toriyama's original story in a video game in this generation, I'm not joking. It did not seem to me a good decision to let the first fight with Frieza be only keeping him with Vegeta and overlooking Piccolo's intervention without them letting us use Vegeta, we had already used him by this point, not Piccolo, and we are starting to need the diversity of playable characters in the story. Further, I think the same with the fight between Goku and Frieza, leaving me many events to be simply related by the narrator. I know that this is a strong point of the game, but it is not necessary to abuse it. The first fight with Frieza, the death of Vegeta, the death of Krillin, the launch of the spirit bomb, everything was rated by a voiceover in less than 2 minutes, and I think they were a little over. Also someone wants to tell me why Goku makes such a spirit bomb against Vegeta and not here against Frieza if it was of such magnitude? Many of us know that in the Saiyan saga, the spirit bomb that we ever see was not more than the size of Krillin's head. I don't understand what their intention was. The transformation of Super Saiyan is quite… I don't know, it's rare. It can only be activated when you have hidden up your rivals to fill this meter. By charging your ki to the maximum, you can transform. Although I must admit that this is by far the best demonstration of the difference in power that exists between the base form of a fighter and its Super Saiyan version. You become much faster, do much more damage, and your special attacks can knock down almost anything. Of course, in other games, transformations are not shown as a way to easily acquire power and be 10 times more broken than before, mainly for reasons of balance and the good structuring of the mechanics, thing that this game can overlook being only an adventure mode against the CPU. The game also has additions beloved by some and hated by others, but there is the inclusion of a little boss fight of Goku against what is supposed to be like the boss of the planet Yadrat where Goku learned to use instant transmission. However, inclusions like the story of Trunks and Gohan from the future seem to me very well thought, not only because it is one of the favorite favorite stories of the fans, but also works as a means to use more characters. This may sound a little unloaded from my part, but this was the first time I saw the death of future Gohan. I didn't know he died, I'm sure many were in the same situation as me and this was an impacting way to find out, which I also appreciate from the game. At very late moments of the story, the game begins to present new things like training in the time chamber, where we must make more required combos than a rival. And this is simply the same concept but taking it to different conditions, there is very little gameplay diversity. In addition to the experience is starting to feel unpolished with the notable lack of dubbing and sound effects, so much that it seems you will hear the same phrases every 30 seconds in the dialogues of the narration. The final fight with Cell is a real headache, since the Super Saiyan starts to fade slowly, you have to keep punching Cell until you reach Super Saiyan 2, without this, Cell does not receive any damage, so this story ends and covers until the end of the Cell saga. Needless to say, many were waiting for the Buu saga. The title of 
of the game specifies Sega and it felt a little bittersweet that it did not have all the official Sagas. After completing the main story mode you unlock the pendulum mode where you can go through the same levels again but using any character you want. This future Gohan without an arm, Krillin, Bardock, Tien and even Yamcha, which makes me think why they did not let us use these characters in the Saiyan saga, more waste of level design. By the way, playing with Broly is disgusting, it seems to be an error in the game because of how broken he is. <laughs> Basically, that's Dragon Ball Z Sagas. I know a lot of people and I have even seen several videos of people pointing this game as the worst trash that could ever exist, and I don't see it that way. This game was the first approach of many to what is an adventure genre with an open linear world, and more in the Dragon Ball universe. I think its soundtrack is outstanding, I do not share the opinion of saying that this is the worst game of Dragon Ball that has existed, not even a little. Have you ever played Dragon Ball Z Taiketsu or Final? about? Those are real garbage games, not this one, Jesus Christ! <laughs> Sagas has a great ambition, simply executed in a very poor way, and I think it is even unfair to compare it with a game like GTA San Andreas when Avalanche Software at that moment did not have and now does not have the capital to create a super production like the one that Rockstar did. The programmers, designers and developers in general had very different ideas in their heads. I know that not everything is money, but execution requires talent and a lot of dedication. They may have lacked time, inspiration, even having references to create what they wanted to achieve with this game. Besides, what is the need to blame Sagas for everything? What was his crime? Give us the first basis of a concept that in the future would become what we know today as one of the best genres for anime and gaming? Let's think about if we are being fair with the legacy of this title. It is not one of the best Dragon Ball games, but surely it's not even close to being the worst one of the franchise.